Hi friends, it's Belinda here from Be Making Joy and welcome to episode 36 of What Brings Me Joy, a mostly knitting podcast from my home here in Calgary, Alberta, Canada, where I share with you my knitting progress and uh, keep track of all my whips and you can hold me accountable for the projects that I cast on. If you're new here, welcome. And if you're a returning viewer, I'm so glad to have you back. I'm recording this on Tuesday, July 16th of 2024. And it's been three weeks since the last episode. And I made a lot of progress with my knitting. I have a lot to show you. I have two finished objects and a hoe. That's H-O, half object. And there's maybe half a dozen whips here to show you. But before I begin showing you the knits, I'm going to give you a bit of an update, a life update, because that relates to why I knit what I knit. If I'll be hinting at it later, let's tell you up front what's going on. So um, after the last episode, I helped my daughter Ilana get ready for her pop-up sale at the Ancient Arts Yarn Stampede Breakfast, which took place this Saturday. We made posters and business cards to have at her booth. Um, did I tell you that she's selling her products under my Be Making Joy name? And her products are going to be up on Etsy in the next couple of days. But she did her beginning at this booth at the Ancient Art Stampede Breakfast Show. Um, so anyway, we designed business cards and posters. She designed the new logo for Be Making Joy. She was responsible for the old logo. Now she's got a new one. So I'm going to show you some photos of the new ones and our new business cards. <clears throat> I'm also including a photo of her booth from the show. Um, I'm, it turned out quite well. She's quite happy with uh, how the show went. We had a very fun day. Um, I'm so grateful that I found that canopy at Walmart for about $70. Because it was a very hot day, but it was fun. And I'm sure we'll get use of that canopy again. Um, yeah, an the Ancient Arts Yarns was very generous, providing a free breakfast for the community and allowing about 20 vendors to set up in the parking lot, all showcasing various aspects of the fiber world, fiber arts. So, yeah, it was a great day. Anyway, the week before the sale, my husband and I took a week-long vacation. So I made sure Ilana had everything she needed before we abandoned her and the, and the cat. We drove to Kelowna from Friday to Friday, which is a seven-hour drive from here, plus shop, stopping for food and gas and whatnot. <clears throat> I did some of the driving, but Dan did most of it, so I knit. <laughs> <clears throat> It was an extremely hot week by our standards. It was in the high 30s Celsius all week. Uh, Dan took his racing bicycle, racing bicycle and his swimming gear and his running clothes. And he used the week as a heavy training week. Um, for those of you who may not know, Dan, my husband, does Ironman races. He's been doing at least one a year for about nine years now. A full Ironman race is a swim for four kilometers, bike for 160, and then run for 42 kilometers. And it takes my husband a little over 12 hours to complete a full race. Um, the top athletes can do it in about eight hours. <clears throat> and then there are other race variations of doing half the distance or even a sprint involving all three sports. Anyway, Dan's next race is in Penticton at the end of August. And where we stayed in Kelowna is on the Okanagan Lake, which is huge. That's where um, Okapogo lives, the um, water monster. Anyway, <laughs> um, and Penticton is also on the same lake, about an hour drive south. And then from there, you go further south into the Soyuz and to the U.S. border. And the race goes around through, through reserve land and back to Penticton. So, <clears throat> uh, this whole area is a desert. It's very good wine country. So there's beautiful scenery, wineries all the way through there. 
So we went there for Dan to practice the bike portion of the race course. On Monday, we tried. Um, he had to cut his ride short due to two flat tires. But we went out again on Wednesday. The temperature that day got up to 40 degrees Celsius, which is 104 Fahrenheit, which I know some of you are experiencing much higher temperatures than that. But like I said, it's higher than we're used to. Um, but his ride that day was successful. And then uh, we came back just in time to uh, help Ilana pack up her finished products and uh, get ready, go off to the sale the next morning. So anyway, we're this far in and I haven't shown you any knitting yet. I got a lot done. My finished objects are socks, two and a half pairs. So let's get started. My first finished pair is what I was calling Ilana's twisty socks. These are the socks where I was experimenting with toes and heels for my daughter from this book, Socks a la carte, Toes Up, a mix and match pattern book. And before we left for the trip, <coughs> sorry, last episode I showed you these were both just a bit past the heel. I was working them in tandem um, as purse projects through the stocking up part. And then on the drive out to Kelowna, I finished both legs. So yeah, um, we were experimenting with toes and heels. Oh, excuse me. In the end, my daughter decided she was comfortable with the star toe, which spreads the increases out in four directions. And then the stepping out heel, which is a version of the a short row heel. And then I finished off the legs with um, a pattern called the Twist of Fate. Mm. And my color sequence almost matches. Slightly off because one, one toe is missing part of its color. So they were done toe up. The yarn is Patton's Cry in the colorway Turquoise Stripes. <coughs> My next fully finished object is the yarn, a bag from River City Yarns um, I got on a trip. But they're fully finished, except for the weaving in of the ends. These ones still need begins woven in as well. I didn't pack my notions pouch very well. I had a plastic darning needle with me, which just wasn't cutting it for me. So I still need to weave the ends in, which I think I'll do tomorrow. We'll call it weave it in Wednesday. I used to do weave it in Wednesday at the last day of every month, but I think I kind of fell off that wagon in May. Got to get back on it. So anyway, the we ends need to be woven in, otherwise it's fully finished. This is the Let's put it on a stock blocker, blocker. This is the Tits Up pattern by Nancy Wheeler of Knit Sit Pappy. Um, she's out of New Brunswick. This is the pattern that she released in 2023 as a fundraiser for cancer research. And I just remembered I had dropped a stitch, so it's hanging on my stitch marker for me to repair. I got to repair that too. I guess it's not fully finished then. <laughs> Oopsie. <coughs> All right. Um, the yarn is yarn that was given to me by my cousin to use to remember my sister with. It's yarn by Lolo Did It on the Lolo's Favorite Yarn Base, which is an MCN, a Merino Cashmere Nylon Blend. It's in the discontinued colorway Smells Like Fall. I started these socks on the anniversary of my sister's death in the end of May. And uh, then I set them aside as they were showcasing Ilana's product, her a running stitch marker that she has created. <coughs> so I set them aside until the day of her sale. And then I worked on them again there and I got them finished that night. Um, I had showed you one sock, the first finished sock previously as a hoe. Um, so now both are finished. 
except for the darning in. Um, the pattern name is Tits Up. It, uh, my favorite line from an Amazon video series, um, The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. She's a comedian, and as she's about to go on stage, her manager tells her, Tits Up. Lift a, a reminder to lift the chest. It improves your pro posture and the confidence. Opens up your lungs. <laughs> Something I need to remind myself more often. So there. Very nice. And I still have a lot of yarn left to find something else to make. I should weigh this, find out how much I actually have, and then start looking for another pattern. And now my, oh, my half object. This is the Summer Crocus Socks pattern by Barb Brown. Um, she's recently deceased, but Ancient Arts Yarns is hosting a summer, what is it called? Summer Shorty Sock Club. Uh, releasing a new pattern by Barb Brown each month and Caroline, the owner, is carrying on in her honor, hosting Zoom meetings for each sock. <clears throat> so this was the June sock. I have one finished. I had this sock almost finished before our trip. I got it finished just in time to join the Zoom group Saturday morning and um, to start the July sock. So I'll get back to the second sock later. But first, I had to cast on the July sock. So anyway, this yarn is sock natal yarn from Ancient Arts. The color is Dusty Rose. I am going to have so much of it left over. Maybe kind of goes with this. Maybe I could pair them. Well, they're different fibers. Anyway, let's see if I could show you the lace patterning in this better. So there's lace across the front of the foot. It's got a wedge toe, a heel flap and gusset. It was done from the cuff down, so it started with a cast on, a pico cast on. Oh, I love it. So I gotta weave the ends in. <coughs> I have to make the second one, but First, I cast it on the July sock, of course. I'm doing my summer socks club projects in this little bag from Ancient Arts Yarns. It came with the purchase of the whole three months set of socks. And the July sock is called the Traveler Shorties. It's also done top down with a nice rolled cuff. And I've done the heel turn. So now my next step is to pick up the stitches along the side of the heel turn for the gusset. Um, you see the nice little pattern on that cuff. I think it's going to fit very well because the inside of the cuff, it started with a bit of rib and then turned into, pushed into the pattern. And then you attach the cast on edge to your knitting down here. So I think that's going to be very good for keeping the sock in place. I worked on it all that first day because it was a Saturday and I've just did it Saturdays as sock knitting. <clears throat> um, Friday was family knitting, which is why I knit Ilana's socks on Friday. And then Saturday sock knitting and uh, what was I gonna say? Yeah, I made a lot of progress. Um, <clears throat> so I probably won't touch it again until Saturday. And then next Sunday, the 21st, is the start of Sock Week, which is a um, project, a group by Natalie, knowing as Nitty Natty, 
of the Love and Stitches podcast that I watch regularly. So on July 21st is the start of sock week. So that week I will probably probably be knitting nothing but socks. So hopefully I'll finish this one. I'll go back and finish the second crocus socks. And then finish this second one. I do also still have the herding cat sock to finish. The second one. <laughs> and of course I have plans for more socks, but I Yeah. But after sock week I'll probably slow down on knitting socks. And this one is also a sock needle yarn. Um this colorway was champagne, I think. Where is it? Yes, this colorway is champagne. Okay. <coughs> and then for Sunday, Sunday, I just did a Sunday shawl day. And I made a lot of progress on my lightning bugs wrap. This project bag was from Pearl Passion, came with um, their, the, the last December's Memories in Yarn set for 2023, a advent calendar. Uh, she's not doing one this year. She said she's going to do something different this year. So looking forward to seeing what she's doing. Um, I don't know if she actually made the bag or she had it made for her. The only label in the bag is, um, it says made for you. Anyway, very useful bag. <clears throat> and in it, I've had my lightning bugs wrap. This is a pattern that I released in 2021 on worsted weight yarn. Now I'm redoing it with, uh, fingering weight yarn. Uh, it was part of my memories in yarn, no, memory, <laughs> sorry, memories of down home collection that I did started during the pandemic. And now those patterns were all released before I started having my patterns proofread by another tech editor. So I want to go back and revamp those patterns and assemble them into a book. And of course, had them tech edited in the process. <coughs> the process is going very slowly. But with this pattern... The original was done in a worsted weight yarn, and I decided to redo it in a fingering weight. I do still love the worsted weight version. There's, it's hanging up right there. And then, but it's nice and warm, but this one is uh, drapier, more dressier. Um, my intention with this, this design is to, for you to see fireflies in the hayfield. Am I showing you the right side? Yes, I am. <clears throat> and uh, for this one, I'm using 80% superwash merino, 20% nylon, I think. I haven't got the label handy. It's hand dyed by Poppy Yarn and Fibers out of Calgary in the colorway Pantheon. Um, I only bought two skeins and I was worried about the yardage, but now that I am almost through the first skein, I'm feeling better about it. It's going to be a bit shy of the, the length of the previous one, but it's going to be long enough to wear, long enough for me to do all the math calculations I want to do. I've only got like this much left. <clears throat> and if you're interested, my cake holders are little nylon footies. So yeah, I'm almost done the first skein. I got my second skein ready to go. Okay. And then on Monday, I make for me. And actually, during our trip, I continued to work on this most of the trip because it's in the perfect project bag for the beach. This is, this is an Ocean Friends theme bag from Twice Sheared Sheep. It came with the summer subscription box from Twice Sheared Sheep. It has a um, smooth, I don't know what the material is, but uh, leathery. Um, 
perfect for the beach. But, um, and of course, while the project's still small enough, and it's starting to get to the point where I'm going to need a bigger bag. Anyway, this is the Milton Cardi by Hokey Locatelli. A top down cardigan with a shawl collar and in stripes of a sport weight yarn combined with a lace weight yarn. So it's giving a really nice texture. The shawl collar has a three by one rib in it. And there's the shoulder seam. Um, yeah, the yarns I'm using, um, the sport weight is Fibra Natura Kingston Queen, Kingston Tweed in the color of marble. And it's a 50% wool, 25% alpaca, and 25% viscose. And the lace weight is um, Manos de Uruguay Marina in the color Atlantis, which has a bit of a variation to the color. <clears throat> so, I worked on it a lot on the beach in Penticton while Dan was doing his riding. Yeah. Anyway, I wish I could try it on for you, but I can't because it's still on the needles. But let's see if Bianca can wear it. Come here, Bianca. There we go. That's still bunched up on the needles, but we're getting there. I'm looking forward to being able to wear this with a summer dress. Lovely, very fun pattern. Okay. <clears throat> now, Wednesday is work knitting day. And <clears throat> The other pattern that I've been designing is a cloak for my Alana. Hers is being done with the Pokemon theme set of 31 minis that we purchased last year from Fangirl Fibers. Um, and then I've added red, white, and black sock natal from Angel Arts Yarns. And but when I write the pattern, you'll be able to knit it all in one color or any color combination you want. But I will also provide the details of this color breakdown that we're doing. Um, we're do doing our hem, button band, and hood in that Pokemon theme colorway. And last episode, I was so proud of myself that I had cast on the or picked up the stitches for the button band and the very first time had exactly the same number of stitches I was expecting. But I shouldn't have been so proud because it flared too much. See that? It's flaring too much. I should have taken into account the, the gauge for seed stitch instead of stockinette stitch. So I left that side, recalculated and picked up the other side. And I'm very happy with this side, with how it's lying flat. I should lay it out somewhere and take better pictures for you. But yeah, I'm very happy with that one now. I have to go back and pick this one out and change it. Um, <clears throat> and also, doing it a second time gave me an opportunity to adjust based on Ilana's suggestion, request. She didn't like how I had done the corner of the first one. She wanted the black and white to turn the corner and meet up, look seamlessly. And at first I'm like, oh, I can't do that. How would I do that? Then I figured it out. <coughs> and I did it over here. Um, still trying to figure out how to actually 
explain this single pattern. What I did when I picked up all the stitches along the button band row along here, I picked up in black two stitches here and in white, I think it was five stitches across that section, and did these sections in intarsia until it was time to stripe them in. Yeah, now we're very happy. There's no buttonholes in this. Um, the set of yarns, the Pokemon yarns, came with ditch holders for all 31 colors, each representing a specific Pokemon. So my daughter, I've told you before, has turned, is yeah, she, she's done it, she's turned them into buttons. But we'll go one at each color, which is a lot. So we're not actually doing buttonholes, we're going to do snaps or poppers all the way down. <clears throat> so my next step now is to redo this button band and then graph out the hood. The hood is going to look like a Pokeball in that red, black and white color. Yeah. I'm quite pleased with this. By the way, in the interest of showing off project bags, this is what I've been carrying the cloak in. It's uh, also from Toy Seared Sheep, came with their fall yarn subscription. No, spring, spring, May, March was spring here in the Northern Hemisphere. So anyway, crazy sock lady. No, crazy yarn lady. <laughs> sorry, I'm sorry. Crazy yarn lady. I also did a few more stitches or rows to the snowflake throw, but then I'm designing, but um, not enough to make it worthwhile showing you this episode. So you'll see that next episode. Um, I'm eager to show you some new acquisitions, but first let's officially update my current whip count. Where is my notebook? Uh oh. I gotta search for my notebook. Oh, there it is. <clears throat> so last episode, I was at 12 unfinished knitting projects. Since then, I finished two pairs of socks and started another pair, bringing my whip count down to 11. Yeah. I'm eager to start a summer top, the love note or the ranunculus, but I will hold off. I need to get a bit more work done on these. And there's still my husband's t-shirt quilt, which he asked about the other day. <laughs> oh well. Acquisitions. Of course, I bought yarn in Kelowna. And I bought yarn at the pop-up sale at Ancient Arts. And I have the color of the month subscription from Ancient Arts Yarns. So I'm going to crinkle to open this package and I will cut that out. We'll start with the color of the month. And as always, I will read the email that she sends out with the monthly subscription. Um, so I get mine on a sock needle base. And this year, the theme is flowers that appear in famous paintings. And July's color of the month is Renoir chrysanthemums. And I will show the photograph of the painting in question. And what she writes, or whoever wrote it, writes, Last month, we were fortunate enough to visit the Chicago Art Institute while we were in Chicago for h, &H Americas. As soon as Caroline saw this painting by Renoir, she was delighted as she loves impressionist artworks and was immediately inspired to make it the July color of the month. She also resonates with Renoir's goal with this painting of giving oneself creative space to try things out in a way that allows experimentation and freedom. Pierre Auguste Renoir, 1841 to 1919, was a founding member of the impressionist movement, and his works during this period focused on everyday people, street scenes, and his local surroundings. 
Chrysanthemums represents the genre of Impressionist flower painting, wherein artists work to capture the fleeting qualities of light and color through loose and open brushwork. Still life floral paintings were composed so as to bring to the viewer a sense of life and natural beauty, indicative of the Impressionist fascination with capturing transitory movements, moments, <clears throat> sorry, with capturing transitory moments of beautiful color. With these works, Impressionist painters strove to document sensory experiences instead of replicating reality with minute precision. Practicality also factored into the production of still life paintings in the 1880s, since still lives were a genre that sold much better at this time than did paintings of more innovative or ambitious subjects. Renoir also became well known for his portraits and was highly sought after by wealthy patrons. As he gained financial independence due to his portraiture work, he moved away from Impressionism and began to adopt the more classic styles of the old masters and then the colorful and sensuous beauty of the 18th century French art. Even though Renoir is famous for his charming scenes of pretty women and sensual nudes, he felt that he had greater freedom to experiment in still life painting. He is quoted as saying, when I paint flowers, I feel free to try out tones and values and worry less about destroying the canvas. I would not do this with a figure painting since there I would care about destroying the work. One of Renoir's favorite floral subjects were chrysanthemums, and in his many paintings of chrysanthemums, he concentrated on the boldness of the colors rather than the precise accuracy of the flower petals. His distinct brushwork captures the ethereal qualities of light and color while creating a dynamic sense of vitality and liveliness. And here's a fun piece of trivia for you. Renoir's grandson, Claude Renoir, was a lighting cameraman on some films that you'll probably recognize. <clears throat> he worked on The River, 1951, Cleopatra, 1963, Barbarella, 1968, French Connection 2, 1975, and the James Bond film, The Spy Who Loved Me, 1977. It is said that his work on the river helped to inaugurate a new era in the cinema, one in which color was finally accepted as a medium fit for great filmmakers to work in. Hmm. It seems the fascination with the effect of light on color carried through the generations. That's chrysanthemums. Okay. <clears throat> and of course, I went to a yarn store in Kelowna. I purchased one skein from Kelowna Yarn and Needle Crafts. I bought a fingering weight hand dyed by Okanagan Dye Works. And I don't know, we checked the yarn base and the color. This is an 80% superwash merino, 20% nylon, 3 ply, 425 yards in the 100 gram skein, and the color is Stormy Nights. But I thought this could represent the Rocky Mountains, which always have some snow on them. I have pictures I took on my drive home last Friday of snow still on the mountains in July. Anyway, my plan with these, with this, because I'm going to Knit City, Calgary next month and the PEI Fiber Festival in Prince Edward Island in October. And then from there, my husband and I, along with my brother and his wife, are hopping across the pond overseas to Scotland, Edinburgh. And then my husband and I are going on to Prague after that. So I thought I would do a project that was like coast to coast and across the pond, across the Atlantic Ocean. So I thought this could represent BC. It's dyed in BC by Okanagan Dye Works. Um, represent the Rocky Mountains. I think I'll do a rectangle shawl wrap. So mountains. And then at Knit City, I will buy something from a central dyer, uh, probably prairies, something that will represent driving through the prairies. <clears throat> and then 
in PEI, I will find something to represent the maritime provinces and something to represent the ocean. And then in Edinburgh, um, in Scotland, I really want to focus on finding heritage breed yarns in Scotland, but I do want to grab something that will represent Scotland or Europe in this project. Well, yeah, so that's why I bought this. And I don't know why I bought this. This was a special colorway dyed for by Ancient Arts Yarns for the Stampede breakfast, pop-up breakfast. So this represents the Calgary Stampede, horses, and grass, and sky, and I don't know. It's gorgeous. So I bought it because it's a special colorway and can remind us of the day Alana started her sales. Lovely. And there, that's all I have to show you for next for now. I will see you next time. Thanks for watching. Happy knitting, happy crocheting, happy jigsaw puzzling, happy sewing, embroidery, cooking, whatever it is that you like to do, go find some joy.